Good morning, my amigos, and welcome to the Minecraft Nether Run Hardcore. Nether Run is a little Minecraft challenge I came up with where you start in the Nether and get to try and beat the game by killing the Ender Dragon. Okay, so turns out I'm not as clever as I thought I was. After I finished recording and writing the script, I did some research and I found out that some other Minecraft YouTubers like Captain Sparkles and Dream actually did something like this back when the Nether update came out in 2020. The YouTuber Coralay did a starting in the Nether Minecraft speedrun, and there's even a page on the Minecraft Wiki fandom about starting in the Nether. So I encourage you to watch those videos if you're interested in challenges like these, but only after you watch mine, of course. However, how other people did this challenge compared to how I did my Nether run was a bit different. There were three main distinctions that I noticed. The first, I cannot use anything from the overworld. Everything I have in my inventory must be acquired from the Nether. The second, the difficulty is set to hardcore, which completely invalidates respawn anchors while still being at the hardest difficulty. And third, they were good, and I suck. So, with that out of the way, this is how my first wave of attempts went for my Minecraft Nether Run Hardcore. Alright, before we continue, I'd like to bring attention to how I would keep progress of my various runs. Given I'm just, you know, a casual player, I figured I was going to die quite often. So I decided to make a system to keep track of how good each of my different attempts were. I did this by keeping track of how long I was in each run and how many advancements I obtained. So Minecraft has a built-in achievements slash advancements list to help players progress smoothly through the game. However, that list would be worthless as I started in the nether and set up the overworld. As such, I created my own list of nether run specific advancements. I will quickly go through all 25 nether run advancements but if you want to go straight to the attempts themselves, please skip to the timestamp on the screen. With that, here are the advancements. Every run will begin with achieving Hardcore, which is received simply by attempting the challenge. Uh, ow! After that, Sign of Hope requires a wood log to be in your inventory. Dubious Soup needs you to make Mushroom Stew, while Upgrades People is achieved by crafting a stone tool. Creating a gold ingot rewards you with I Got Ingots, one of the most important advancements. Better Safe Than Starry has you create gold armor, and Goldeneye has you trade with a piglin. Following Goldeneye, 15% luck is acquired by receiving an ender pearl from a piglin trade, while life insurance is obtained by receiving a potion of fire resistance from bartering. Finally, No Way Home is earned when a block of obsidian is given via piglin trade. Extending past No Way Home, Far From Home requires 5 obsidian blocks to be in your inventory, and Homecoming requires building a new nether portal. The following two advancements, I Spy and The End, come from Minecraft's official advancement list. These require entering a stronghold and entering the end, respectively. Killing the Ender Dragon would usually result in the advancement of Freeing the End, but for this specific run, I gave it a new name, Nether Say Nether. Nether Say Nether is the end goal of the nether run, as earning it completes the challenge. So that was the main line of advancements, but there are some other ones that are beneficial and some that are just actually required. Some of these include Stringer, which requires you making or obtaining a bow, and following that is Ammonites, which simply demands getting an arrow. War Pigs is another advancement taken straight from Minecraft. To get it, you must loot a chest from a Bastion Remnant. Rare Ore is next, and getting this advancement requires crafting or finding an Iron Ingot or any Iron-based tool. Oh, please, it requires crafting a shield, and PK Fire requires making a flint and steel or obtaining a fire charge. Moving on to the final branch of advancements, A Terrible Fortress and Into Fire are both taken from vanilla Minecraft. The former has you enter another fortress, and the latter has you obtain a blaze rod. Up next is We'll Take What We Can Get, more commonly abbreviated to WTWWCG. Great name, by the way. Double V T Quadruple V C G has you loot a chest, this time from another fortress. Finally, the last advancement on this list is the All Seeing Eye, which simply requires you to craft an Eye of Ender. I will also quickly point out that I will keep track of my best run right above my face cam, which is determined by a mix of advancements received and how long I survived in the world. We have reviewed all 25 advancements as well as taking a look at my general layouts. So, with everything else done, let's get into the runs. I HAVE THE RUNS! Right off the bat, I knew I was going to die a lot. 
being in the nether with primitive tools and basically no armor was going to be a disaster to say the least. Not to mention, I am nowhere close to being considered a pro player. But I thought I had prepared myself mentally for what was to come. Needless to say, I was not prepared. Where am I? I think this is the first time I've ever naturally spawned into the Badlands. My first run began with me spawning in a biome I had never spawned in before, the Badlands. Never in my over a decade of casually playing Minecraft had I ever started here. Oh, well, I suppose it was the first time for everything, but unfortunately this rare spawn was to be wasted on this nether run. Anyway, every run will begin with me in creative mode to build the portal, and then I'll switch back to survival to enter the nether. Once I enter, I cannot leave until I create a second nether portal using obsidian found in the nether. My start in the nether was unfavorable, to put it lightly. I was chucked into arguably the most dangerous nether biome, the basalt deltas. In this biome, there are no trees, a boatload of lava and magma cubes, and the terrain is stupid hard to navigate with all the spikes. Of course, my initial goal was to get out of this biome as quickly as possible. I was hoping to find a crimson or warped forest to make some progress with wood, but I immediately found myself running from magma cubes and getting stuck. I had to make a risky jump to proceed, leaving me with only a few hearts left. And I found some mushrooms, but without wood to make a bowl, these mushrooms were basically useless. As I traversed the edge of the basalt delta, a magma cube saw me and cornered me. With no other option, I had to fight back, which prompted it to split itself and instantly kill me. With that, my first one was over quite quickly, with only one advancement in a time of fewer than four minutes. This was definitely a terrible start. As a side note, if you want to see all the advancements, I left a list of them in the description so you don't have to rewind the video. Moving on. Alright, so my second run started quite humorously. I forgot to put myself in creative mode, and when I entered the world, I spun underwater. So that left me at 4 hearts and I switched to creative mode to make the portal. I then put myself back into survival and entered the nether with my still reduced life and hunger. So not only did I put myself at a disadvantage by having low health, but guess where I spawned? The Basalt Delta again. As it might be obvious, I did not last long. I was sniped by a random magma cube I couldn't even see. However, I felt cheated, so I tried to re-enter the nether with max health and max hunger, and this happened. I'm dying! I can't do anything! Wow, the game was really like, uh-uh, you don't get a second try. So yeah, the magma cube spawn camped me while I was stuck in the loading screen. So I gave up and moved on to the next world. Finally, on my third attempt, I spawned outside of the Basalt Delta, giving me a bit of hope. I wandered around the nether wastes for a while, hoping to find some kind of forest biome. I saw gold and I found mushrooms, but I couldn't really do anything with them yet. Getting wood was my utmost priority. Unfortunately, what I found instead was yet another Basalt Delta. These things just love me. With hostile piglins and deadly ghasts blocking off other areas of exploration, I reluctantly entered the biome to find something better. I wanted to stay on the outside edge of this stupid biome, but I was forced to cut through the middle to continue exploring. Of course, the local magma cubes did not like that very much, so they began hunting me down to sit on me. I eventually corded myself and was forced to fight a mama magma cube without the option to run away. Oh my days. Come on, jump. Jump. Stupid! Lots of gas. Anyway, with that victory, I continued onward, deciding to dig a path through Netherrack to advance farther in the biome. This was risky, as I could uncover a lava gap and with no way of covering the hole, I would just die from the lava because of how fast it moved in the nether. Regardless, I took the risk and made my way up. They sound so close. Yup. And they can take it through here. I don't know what to do.
Back one first. Oh! Oh, they were just camping. Bro, no way. Okay, at least I found some new area. I'm out of here. Where's the cast uh, back there, probably? That's a lot of mushrooms. That's really good. I just gotta find the place to actually get wood. Oh! Finally, for the first time, I escaped the basalt delta biome after entering it, but my troubles weren't over. I still had to find wood to make tools and mushroom stew. And then this happened. Mm, oh my. Ow, what the heck? Hey, hey, please die. Oh my days. Oh. Yep, I just burned to death from a ghast. Well, at least I don't have to worry about finding wood anymore. Anyway, since I survived much longer in my third run, run 3 overtook run 1 as my best run. I just realized I put run like 5 times in that one sentence. I should probably change that, but that's quite funny. As soon as my fourth run started, I encountered the stinky gold diggers. And since I had no gold, I had to run away lest they kill me. Wow, well, they're right on top of me! No way this is the end. Oh, yes! Oh, finally! This is where my luck began to finally turn around. As I escaped the piglins, I found a crimson forest. Finally! I immediately mined the wood, getting my first advancement that wasn't hardcore, and I made the standard wooden tools. I continued by making a hole in the wall to build a house. Oops, never mind, there was lava. The second hole I mined was to be in my house. Great, there's lava here too. Oh! Oh my days! Why does it... Why does it travel so fast? I realized that lava moves much faster in the nether than in the overworld after that scare. I cleaned up my house and continued with my run. No way! That's so stupid! To be honest, I completely mishandled that situation. I should have remained calm and placed the netherrack back down to block the entrance. But instead, I panicked and backed up farther into my house. When I realized that the piglin didn't charge immediately into my house, I walked up to place the block back down. But at that point, the crossbow piglin hit me away, causing me to miss and allowing the other piglin to enter my house, sealing my fate. On the plus side, run 4 overtakes run 3 as my best run since I found wood, despite surviving for less than half as long. This shows that advancements are more valuable than survival time when determining the best run, though both are important. Run 5 began as I spawned in the cave. I was free from dangerous mobs like casts and piglins, but I could easily be stuck with no way out and be forced to mine a tunnel with my hand. Tunneling in the nether is dangerous because of the lava gaps we saw earlier, like when I made my house in Run 4. Regardless, I continued onward and quickly found myself at a dead end. Despite the risk, I decided to tunnel for a bit as I heard some mob sounds. What are these sounds? <laughs> if I dig into lava, there's no saving me. Oh! <gasps> Please! Redemption! This time, I was rewarded by finding another crimson forest, which meant I had easy access to wood. But then I realized that the area I stumbled into was filled with hogwins and piglins. Great. I had to come up with a different plan. Okay, I need to get to higher ground. Ah! Oh no! Oh no! Are you kidding me? Kill Not me! Oh my. Bro, kill the freaking. They did the were there here. Why did they spawn in? 
Oops. So remember when they said I was free from dangerous mobs like ghosts and piglins? Yeah, I guess I was wrong. Out of anger, I lit a tree ablaze. Moving on, I was instantly punished by karma as I spawned in what I considered to be the worst biome alongside the Basalt Delta, the Soul Sand Valley. The Soul Sand Valley is an unlucky biome for this challenge because 1. Traversing it eats up the hunger bar, and 2. All the mobs that spawn there are stinky long range campers. No. <gasps> I'm dropping. Dude, I don't know where to go. Oh my gosh, I'm on sand. Soul sand. This is probably the worst spawn location I've ever gotten. Dude, there's just so many everywhere. Bro, I'm, oh my gosh, there goes all my freaking food. Slow down, slow down. No one's chasing me. There you are, chasing me. Move! Oh my days, I didn't run in time. I'm gonna survive this though. It's gotta get to a place where there's no gas. Trees, trees. Next to this mo- Oh my gosh, this is terrible. I just gotta get to a safe place, ow. Oh, you've got to be kidding <laughs> Okay. No way. Eventually, I escaped the Soul Sand Valley and stumbled across a crimson forest with only one heart to spare. At first, I was happy that I found a biome with wood, but since it was the crimson forest, piglins and hogwins had a very high spawn rate. Those mobs could kill me at any point if I wasn't careful, especially since I only had one heart. As such, I decided to play extremely carefully. I dug into a wall of soul sand to make my way deeper into the crimson forest without being targeted. After seven whole minutes of mining soul sand and nether rack, I needed food desperately. My hunger bar was almost halfway depleted, and once it got down to three hunger units left, I would not be able to run, essentially sealing my fate. However, I still needed to make wood to access wooden tools. You can see based off my gameplay how cautious I'm playing. I'm taking zero chances and checking everywhere for any potential threats. Eventually, I spot a hoglin on a tree, and I make it my goal to kill it so I can finally eat. Hey, these burgers can't jump, right? Stop running away! Oh no, he's trying to get to me. After 15 minutes of hiding in fear throughout this run, my luck turned around. I had food and some fundamental tools. This could be the run. Sometimes I cannot believe how utterly incompetent I can be. Out of everything that could have been my demise, this was probably the easiest to avoid. I had soul soil in my inventory! All I had to do was place one or two more blocks to fill the gap and all would have been perfectly fine. But guess what? I got overly excited at the prospect of progress and I died because of it. 
At the very least, run 6 takes the pedestal for being my best run so far. Out of all my attempts, run 7 started as the most promising. I spawned inside of the warped biome, which meant I didn't have to waste time looking for wood. The warped biome is arguably the best biome to get in nether run, since the player has access to wood and there are no naturally hostile mobs. Not to mention that ha <sighs> Not to mention that high enderman count would help with collecting ender pearls before I left. However, if I picked a fight with an enderman without being careful, my non-existent armor would cause me to die in like two hits. So, as long as I don't look an enderman in the eyes, I won't die. Easy, right? I began by collecting wood and making myself a small house. After collecting some more logs, this happened. No way. What's up, Enderman? I honestly thought that he teleported straight into my line of sight and was coming to kill me. Luckily, I missed the three attacks I threw out, as the Enderman wasn't actually being hostile, he was just being a boofer and scaring the shist out of me. After a while, I collected some mushrooms to make mushroom stew, giving me the advancement of dubious soup. This marks the first run as having more than just two advancements. I continued my journey by trying to find some blackstone. I needed to make stone tools for the advancement of upgrades people to mine the gold found throughout the nether. After traversing deep through the warped forest and avoiding every set of eyeballs like the introvert I am, I came across a basalt delta, the gold mine of blackstone. Not all was good though. Because of where I was, I could easily get mauled by magma cubes gas surrendermen. After some self-deliberation on how I should cross over, I decided to build a netherrack bridge to avoid falling into lava and avoid fights against magma cubes. Ha! Huh. Stupid! I arrived at the basalt delta and immediately closed myself off in a small cave to ensure my safety against mobs. I then crafted a stone pickaxe and this gave me my fourth advancement and thus I continued mining to have enough stone to last me for a good while, so I wouldn't have to come back. After being satisfied with the amount of black stone I collected, I left and immediately began mining gold nuggets with the power of my new pickaxe. I wandered around the massive warp biome for a good while before I realized something. Well, saying I'm lost makes me sound like a buffoon, so let's just say I'm exploring to find mushrooms and gold, okay? At this point, I've amassed over two stacks of gold nuggets, and half a stack of each type of mushroom. I have the money, and I have the food, now I just need to get back to my base. No way! No way! Oh. Oh. Uh, well, it was bound to happen eventually. I slipped up and accidentally looked at an enderman who proceeded to two-shot me, ruining 40 minutes of progress. Run 7 would replace run 6 as my best run, but I was still feeling down after losing such good progress. Honestly, run 6 was pretty underwhelming, especially compared to run 7. I spawned once again in the warped forest, giving me a second chance to prove myself against the enderman. However, I kind of died a sad death. No way. On my days. So... Do I'm the AI recording me?
Despite the stupid way I lost the run, there was a crucial development to how I would play from here on out. While digging out my house, I realized a wooden pickaxe could break quartz ore and receive the drops. This later made me wonder if the same could be done with gold nuggets, and yeah, it can. I was under the impression I needed a stone pickaxe to mine both, but I was proven wrong. I'm not sure where I got that idea, but at least I know now. While I got the advancement, I got ingot for making a gold bar for the first time during this wave. It didn't really matter, as I wouldn't trade it with any piglins, and as you guys already know... <coughs> I died. And somehow, run 9 managed to be even worse than run 8. As soon as I spawned the Basalt Delta, which was already a terrible start, ghasts I couldn't see started shooting at me, forcing me to run away. I traversed through the biome, quickly finding an exit, and I got sniped by a ghast. Nothing too terrible though, as I found a warped forest. Except then I realized it only contained 4 trees and the biome ended, dropping off into a pool of lava. Now, I was stuck in a corner, fighting for my life against a ghast that I couldn't kill. To make things worse, I accidentally looked at an enderman during my fight with the ghast, and I fell to my demise trying to avoid the enderman. <laughs> These past few runs really brought down my morale, but I was determined to do one last run to end off this wave of attempts. And let me tell you, this last run was the best one by far. Right off the bat, I spawned between two small crimson and morphed forests, which gave me access to a few trees. Some hoglins tried to barrel through me, but I outsmarted them, giving me early access to good food. Using my new knowledge that wooden pickaxes can mine gold nuggets, I immediately searched for gold to make some gold armor and ingots to trade with piglins later. Unfortunately, since I was in the nether wastes, ghasts were very prevalent and they constantly interrupted my plans. One of them started getting on my nerves, so I started fighting back. Come on, that way, that way, that way. No, that's the wrong way. Why am I on fire? I can't see. Can't aim. What's up? Oh, shut up. You should just see spawned in front of me. And wouldn't you know it, I looked at an Enderman again. No way, this is happening again! This was it. It was the end of the last run. But by some miracle, I survived on one heart, allowing me to continue my final attempt. After healing up, I continued my journey to collect more gold nuggets. I encountered more ghasts, more piglins, more typical nether stuff. At some point, my game began to lag and rubber band really badly. What? Woo, 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 woo. So I had to exit and re-enter. I'm not sure what caused it, but I fixed it pretty quickly. After returning, I made some golden boots, giving me the advancements better safe than sorry, and getting the ability to trade with piglins without being fear for my life. So I did just that. The trading resulted in another two advancements. Oh, that's where the gas is. Oh my gosh, this is so useful! Thank you, you are a good man. My current goal was to mine as much gold as possible to trade with the piglins to try and start collecting obsidian and enderpearls. I went around for a couple of minutes collecting more gold and avoiding more ghasts, and I began my second round of trading. This resulted in another advancement of 15% muck, but unfortunately not much else. So, for his bad trades, I executed him. I continued farther out into the nether, searching for even more gold. Also, totally random question, but do you remember the magma cube that sniped me during run 2? Well, watch this.
Oh my days, what a scare. After that, I tried to fight two ghasts at once, but quickly gave up on the prospect and returned home. I wanted to explore farther down into the nether, but a gas blocked my path, and since I am deathly afraid of them, I went exploring up instead. Of course, another ghast followed me, but I decided I wouldn't run away this time. That's so stupid. Yes! 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 Get... Just get dunked on. Oh my days. I was gonna do a really bad hand gesture, but... Finally! I got my revenge. Anyway, back to gold mining. I continued exploring for about 5 minutes, picking up resources as I went on. But when I came back, there was a surprise waiting for me. Kill the babies, kill the babies. Good, 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 good. Knock them down, knock them down. Ah! They just explode everywhere. Bro, I wish Sweeping Edge was in bedrock. Oh my days, how close do I have to be to them? Dude, I'm getting lightheaded. I think the previous runs have permanently scarred me of magma cubes, as I get utterly terrified when I see a big one. Anyway, I bullied a helpless ghast and went mining for, you guessed it, even more gold. At this point, I'm the gold digger. Literally. By now, I had almost three stacks of gold nuggets and I was able to make up to 20 ingots and begin my third round of trading. Stupid? Wait, 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 get back here, we If you could break my portal, that'd be pretty cool, actually. Yes! Yes! My first piece of obsidian. Will you just get me? Oh! Oh! Ha! Blackstone! Okay, more bricks. What do these bricks even do? Oh! oh. Back. Where'd you go? Oh, there you go. Oh, wait, I'm gonna call you. I'm gonna call you Chris. Oh, come on, Chris. Yes, I love you, Chris. Hello? Wait. That is so good. I was gonna push. No! What is going on? Dude's going crazy! That touched his tentacles! Ow. Bro, I'm, I'm not dying now. Okay. 
Just your chest. All the useless stuff. And then that happened. For a few minutes after that death, I tried to figure out why Chris would betray me like that. I consulted a in-person and a real friend who explained that might have happened because the piglin thought I was looting a chest, which would make him instantly hostile towards me regardless if I was wearing gold armor. Upon further research, this was proven to be correct, and I learned that piglins can even detect chests opening through walls. What bothers me the most about this is that the death was easily preventable. In every other attempt, I made a small cave house with a door to keep myself safe in case anything happened. Of course, in the run where I didn't build a base with a door, I got killed because the piglin had easy access to me. But with that, my final attempt, run 10, became my best run of this first wave. I plan on doing more waves like this in the future so I can hopefully one day complete the challenge. That being said, I have some other videos already in the works, so it might be a little while before I get to try it again. If you guys are interested, I encourage you to give the challenge a shot and tell me how it goes. But do be warned, it is very difficult. I'm also going to leave a link in the description to the full 3.5 hour livestream if you guys want to watch my opinion misery uncut and unedited. I'm also going to make a video of a compilation of all the deaths, so hopefully that will be entertaining too. And make sure to check out the other YouTubers I mentioned earlier who tried out something like this. So, with all that being said, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Okay, so this is a bit embarrassing, but while I was playing, I actually thought that my final run, run number 10, was actually run 9. So I ended up playing an extra run after run 10. We are not going to talk about it because it was absolutely horrendous and I wasted 20 minutes with absolutely no progress. But it does exist and that's why you'll see it in the live stream if you watch that. So... So with everything else out of the way, thank you and I'll see you later. <gasps>